Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, which is 10 a.m. if you're in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well and you had a good weekend and it's good to see you here. I hope you're well as well. I'm doing good. Yep, no, I haven't lost my sanity with the isolation <laughs> hanging in there like the rest of the world. Oh dear. Um, what are we working on? We are working on the house in the hollow game, which you can wishlist right now on Steam. Just type exclamation Steam in Twitch chat or click the graphic in my panels below my stream. Uh, do remember too, if you do miss any of the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab at the top of my Twitch page. Smurfberry Barbecue, it's good to see you. Thank you, Euro, as Euro just popped the link for Steam, uh, for the, to wishlist the game on Steam. What's this doubt, JPEG Smurfberry? <laughs> well, what is this? What, 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 what? You confuse and feel right off the bat. You haven't lost your sanity? Well, that's good to hear. Oh man, this lockdown's been interesting to say the least. I'm just going to grab a quick drink. Still in the United States, aren't they starting to lift some of the restrictions in some states? Um, Spurberry says rather suspicious to call it out. Talking about me having a drink, it's only water. It's only water. <laughs> Trust me, it's only water. Um, House in the Hollow, that's what we're working on. Uh, last week we were doing the fireplace, so we, uh, we UV mapped it up and did the vertex colouring, so we can jump straight into doing some texture mapping today. Uh, <laughs> some texturing today. That's, that's the plan anyway. So... This is our fireplace. Did we export it? I can't remember. I don't know. Let's see. Export selected. No, I'm going to have to manually go there. Thank you very much, Max. Model study chosen. Fireplace. No, I did not export it. So there you go. Let's do that. No, I did. Um, <laughs> now you're throwing me for a loop, all you guys in chat. Um, so we've exported it. We're going to bring it into Substance Painter and start doing some texture mapping on it. So let's do that. Open up Substance Painter, create a new project, select the fireplace. And turn on Compute Tangent Space. Bake out our map. Using low poly as high poly. Uh, as always, guys, if you do have any questions while I'm working, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. I'm on Twitch to actually encourage you guys to do 3D, so don't ever think that you're uh, interrupting me or anything. Um, if you just want to say hello and chat, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. I get that. I don't always want to talk to people that are streaming either. I just want to watch. Just trying to work out what's going on here with this um, this mesh. Does not look quite right. Why is that? Sometimes it's the ambient occlusion that does that. There we go. We'll just get rid of them. We're not using the ambient occlusion anyway. Uh, but I, I will keep an eye on that as we texture it up to see if there's any issue with the UV mapping. It shouldn't be. All right, let's do it. 
Okay, so let's start with some wood. I'm going to use the smart materials I created for the other furniture. Let's have a look at this one. Let's mask it with color selection. Okay, now this is odd. It's uh, why you do this. It's done the same thing it did last week where it defaulted to not using vertex color, but material color. <sighs> what have you done, Adobe? They up this is a new version of Substance Painter, by the way. Um, Kamal's workshop says, does Mama Set Toolbag use materials for substance or not? I have problems importing materials from 3D Studio Max. I don't actually use Mama Set Toolbag. Smurfberry does. Smurfberry, can you answer that question? I'm not really sure. I would have thought it should, because if you're exporting textures, tool bag is bag, uh, Smurf Barry says, if you're exporting the textures from Substance Painter, it sh it, they're only uh, bitmaps, so it, it should. Does tool bag use the materials? It should. I don't know about, if, I don't know if it will use the SBZAR files, like the substances directly. But, um, but if you're exporting the textures at this way by going export textures and it should there should no reason it shouldn't but uh, I don't know about loading up the the materials directly no problem Kamal uh, so yes what it's done here is it's um, let's have a look at this so the ID map it's defaulting to material color now, this is very annoying I, I want vertex color I did change it last week, but obviously uh, it's changed it back. Smurfery says, I don't think you can import SBZARs on the uh, Substance Fragment shaders, but it will use any exported image file from Substance like TGA, PG, PGNG, JPEG. So, yeah, that's right. So, uh, so we're just going to rebake these maps again. Now that I've told it to use the correct material color. And I'm just going to remove the uh, ambient occlusion because we don't need it. Alrighty, now let's get rid of this blank layer at the bottom and let's mask with color selection again. Let's have a look at, how do I want to do this? Let's have a look at this bit. And let's play with our mixing a little bit. Euro says uh, there are paid live link plugins to bridge substance with Marmoset. They're linked on the Toolbag plugin web page. So there you go. If you really want it, you can actually obviously buy a paid plugin to do it. Uh, again, I, I, don't, I, I have not. Marmoset's a great program. I, I don't use it simply because when I'm doing any of my beauty renders, uh, I do them in Max with V-Ray. A bit, bit more old school that way. Um, but Marmoset's a great program, so I'm, I'm not dissing Marmoset. I'm just uh, saying I don't tend to use it. Sniper Echo, it's good to see you. Hey to you as well. Hope you're well. dealing with the lockdown like the rest of us. Now I'm just going to... I might just reduce the height information on this a little bit. 
Kamal's workshop says I simply use it for uh, for its turn to you yeah, look I know it's it's really look it's a great program particularly if you want to get your beauty beauty shots out really quickly and you're right the turntable is you know it's a great feature um, it takes a lot more work to get that all set up in Max but I tend to use like a, a default project that I can just replace the models with so I just have to set up my camera for my, my, my rotation turntable stuff once and I just swap out the model depending on what I want the, the same with the settings for um, the V-Ray I don't really have to change that very much either Yuri says, I rendered video from it before, as in animations, not just turntables. Yeah, and look, it, uh, it's a great program. You can you can do a lot of different things with it. Mama said that is. I sort of have the height turned off there. So what is giving me this height information? It's the normal map. So I'm just going to pull back a little bit on the normal intensity. Well, that's a good starting point. Let's um, let's keep layering, shall we? Uh, Kamal says, yep, Sniper says, I set up a custom scene and swap out the asset when I want to render. I just parent the new asset to the table and hit render. That's what I do too. I have like um, a default scene that I set up and then I just swap out the model. So I don't have to, <laughs> you know, 10 seconds work at most really. And, uh, and I like to use, uh, I do it in V-Ray and Max because I can use network rendering so I can speed it up, the whole process right up. Uh, if I wasn't doing network rendering, then I'd probably certainly use Marmoset because it simplifies it all. Uh, but I do like the results you get from um, V-Ray as well. What else do I want to do here? Uh, Have a look at this one as well. Again, we're going to mask with color selection. Uh, I'm going to rotate. Am I going to rotate? Every time they update this program, Adobe, they move stuff around. I'm trying to find what I'm looking for. Why do you do this? There we go. Oh, man. I'm going to stop updating the program if Adobe keeps messing with it. It just gets too annoying. I'm going to rotate this back to zero because I want the Wood, gra wood grain to run, um, I don't want it to run horizontally, I want it to run vertically. Why you mess with things Adobe? Why? I'm also just going to knock back the normal map intensity on on this wood grain a little bit okay let's put both of those in their own grouping 
And let's look for Smart Mask. Yeah, might change the colors too, but we'll do the mask first. Um, Euro says it takes a bit of for doodling with the right cameras and Max to work with uh, Mama set though. You haven't used Substance in ages. I, I normally use Mari by the Foundry to do my texture mapping because I used to work in film and Mari is used in film a lot. Uh, and I still love Mari. Um, but because we're making a game, a Substance Painter is amazing if you're doing texturing for game assets. Um, it's sort of like that was what it was built for. Not, not saying that's all you can use it for, but it was initially sort of like built for, um, for UE4 and gaming modeling. PBR modeling. Uh, and I do really like Painter. Um, they've been updating it regularly, which is good. It's annoying when, um, now that Adobe own it, they're messing with the interface and that's annoying. Adobe, stop messing with the interface. Stop removing buttons, stop resetting, you know, preferences and everything when you update the program. That's not good Adobe. Bad, bad Adobe. Stop it. Uh, but it is a good program. Yuri says, last job, they just wanted uh, the low poly and baked maps. They had their own textured person. <laughs> and Yuri says, easy life. That's right. First world problems. First world problems. Um, let's see here. Now, I'm just going to throw down a uh, mask with color selection on that new group. Otherwise, it's going to apply the smart mask to everything. Sniper says nobody's worse than user, nothing's worse than user interface changes happening and resetting preferences. Tell me about it. That's what Adobe have done with this new version. Can't remember the version number. It's the very latest version, whatever that is. Uh, they've, they've removed buttons. They've reset preferences when I updated it. It's very, very annoying. Uh, Sniper says user interface changes I can live with, but losing preferences is a nope, no, nope. a no, no. That's right. I agree. Stop it, Adobe. Stop it. It's one way to quickly piss off your users. Uh, I'm all for you updating, updating things and adding new stuff to the program, but don't reset preferences. People set up preferences for a reason. They don't want them messed with. And if you're updating the program, which is what I do, I don't reinstall it. Well, I, actually, part of the re, uh, part of the update process, if you pay close attention, it actually uninstalls the old program before it installs the new one. Um, but normally, every other update, that's just kept your preferences. Not this new version. <laughs> uh, there is a problem too with using Wacom tablets with the new version of the engine. Uh, if, you, if you jump on Algorithmics Forum. Uh, you can read people bitching about it. It's yeah, they've messed with the um, with pen control with this new version as well, and people are not happy. Confusion, it's good to see you. Hope you're well. I'm really good. I hope you're doing well as well. Confusion, confusion. Uh, Yuri says uh, I'm install it and see what they broke. <laughs> do it. Sniper says hi. Oh, that's right. Sniper is saying to Euro, don't do it, mate. You're in that happy place right now. Legmog, it's good to see you, Legmog. Legmog says, um, emerged. I just got here, saw Sniper's comment. I then looked at my C4D window and saw the only custom button I added into the user interface a few weeks back is gone. Falls to my knees on bench with the ruins of the Statue of Liberty in the background. And Peach, sorry. You maniacs, you blew it up. Well, you, you know how annoying it is. You finally get your program all set up the way you like it. You've got your buttons in the right spots. You've set your preferences. You've been working that way for months. And then an, along comes an update to the software that completely wipes out all your preferences, removes some of the buttons that used to be there. It's annoying because it takes a while to get a program set up the way you like it. So don't do it, Adobe. Don't do it. You'll get a pill slap from me, Adobe. Hero says, uh, I haven't used it for years. I have all my export presets backed up anyway. 
and hello to you two leg mugger. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Confusion says I was waiting for substance cleanup. <laughs> Eurus says uh, looks at Max, also looks at say preferences on the cloud. Sniper says any of you guys have converted keyframed animations to vertex animation? <laughs> Smurper says Adobe sucks. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Um, Legmog says this is why 99% of the time I don't ever tweak the user interface. <laughs> Legmog just adopts the, the good old British WW2 World War II mantra of keep calm and carry on. Um, <laughs> well, you know, if you're using ZBrush, then you've got to adapt the interface because it's just so horrible. <laughs> oh, Phil's going to get some hate for that. All those ZBrush fanboys. How dare you say anything against, against ZBrush. Um, I'm trying to look for a smart material here, a smart mask, I should say. <sighs> what do I want? What do I want? Um... Sniper says, you know, everyone always hammer on about the Blender user interface. How, how has ZBrush escaped that? Oh, it's, I don't know. You tell me. ZBrush is just walks its own way, does its own thing. Its interface is the strangest thing I've ever come across. I mean, what do you... Look, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's bizarre. The user for interface with ZBrush, look, and I know you get used to it. Look, I've, <laughs> I've had you guys say, you know, use it enough, you'll get used to it. I know. But that's not the point. <laughs> it's just standardize the user interface, for God's sake. Make it like other 3D programs that everybody is used to using. Don't walk to your own beat, do your own thing and make up your own interface, Pixel logic, because, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's rubbish. Things are hard to find, things are nested within menus, within menus, within menus. It's just a nightmare to use. The whole two and a half D canvas thing is just bizarre and unnecessary anymore. I just drop it already. Get rid of it. Make it a proper 3D program. Come on. <laughs> uh, Yuri says, I made my Max a deep blue purple with yellow orange. Oh, yuck. Text. <laughs> well, each to each of their own, I suppose. I like grey. Grey and black. <laughs> Simple tastes for Phil. Sniper says, I mean, come on. Uh, Confusion says Maya or other. Uh, Legmog says, well, rest in peace button. I added it to the user interface last week, only used it once, and now it's gone like a teardrop in the rain. Uh, Legmog's custom button, April 2020, May 2020. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> Put your button back, Legmog. Mopri says it's like rolling your own cryptography. It's a bad idea. That's exactly right. Don't reinvent the wheel. It's unnecessary. Uh, Sniper says Legmog, was it really in your face save button? <laughs> Euro says you say EGAD, but it's easier on the eyes. Well, you could be right. You could be very well right. Uh, I just like the dark theme of everything. I turn everything dark now. So I like that dark grey black look. Um, and it's easier on the eyes than like that bright white that n the programs used to default to before Windows introduced the black theme or the dark theme. Oh, come on. What smart mask do I want? Stop touching my face. Can't touch my face. I'm so used to doing it and we're not allowed to do it. Oh, when are these lockdowns going to be over? When can I stop washing my hands? Man! It sounds filthy, doesn't it? Like Phil never washes his hands. I do, but I just don't want to have to do it 10 times a day. Um, what smart mask do I want? No. Let's try the dust occlusion.
I'm just trying to, I'm looking for a mask that'll give me an interesting blend between these two different wood grains. Let's turn triplanar on. Masking something a lot. I think what I might do is uh, Legmark says no, no. For that, I have now I now have control stuck down on the keyboard <laughs> with tape, and I have one of those little nodding head bird toy thingies like Homer Simpson uses when he gets really obese and starts working from home. One of those things talking about when he wears his moo moo uh, bird toy thingies which continuously pushes the S button <laughs> exactly like Mog says right um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just darken up the wood underneath a little bit Same with this one, we'll just make that a little bit darker. So we can get a bit more of an interest, interesting look, looking mix going on between the two woods. Yuri says, so this substance update changed nothing for me. I guess I had my layout already set to their default, <laughs> their new default. It would have changed one thing at least. If you go to export textures, there used to be a button here to open the folder that you export your textures to. Adobe in their wisdom have decided to remove that button. And it was really handy. Like you export your textures, you want to check check them, look at them, whatever. Uh, there was a button that says open folder. It's It's gone. It's no longer there. That's annoying. Trust me, it's not there. I've looked everywhere. It is not there. So when they reworked their export texture dialogue, they removed the button. And look, it's a small thing, but it's a, it was a really handy thing to have. You don't have to go digging through folders to find your texture folder. So that would have been one change at least that they would have done that you will notice. Uh, but yeah, I've noticed too with the bake to texture stuff, they're, they're defaulting to material IDs instead of vertex colors, even though I changed it. So yeah, it's just very annoying. Very, 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 very annoying. Now let's see, what else can I do here? Snapperry says, gee, it's almost like it's Adobe. I know. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Almost like Adobe. Uh, algorithmic, why did you sell out to Adobe? Snapperry says, it's almost like this was predictable at the moment that they bought Algorithmic. Yep, you know what Adobe are like. They don't tend to want to listen to their users. They just want to do their own thing. Because, you know, they think they know better. Well, you don't. You don't know better, Adobe. You listen to your users. You wonder why you get so much grief from the community. It's because you never listen. Yuri <laughs> says, yeah. Look, I do like their software though, apart from when they change things. I'm just looking through my smart materials here. See if there's anything that might be cool to put on top. Yeah, 
through foreign lands across the shores. She's getting high when she's afraid to face the you never know. Half the fun of using substance. I speak properly. For half the fun of using substance painter is just playing around and mixing different things together to see what you get. At least it is for me. Maybe I'll add a few more other textures and then we'll come back and look at reworking that a bit. Yeah, it might be a better idea. Might be better. Okay, so let's look at these pieces on the side here. I'm going to go back into my smart material. And let's look at this one. Uh, Euro says, I called this out on the Discord along with hundreds of others. Uh, Euro says, Phil, in the export menu, if you go to the list of exports, there is your button. Where is my button? You're talking about here? Where's my button? Ah, oh, I see. Oh, there you go. They moved it, but they haven't removed it. So that, that's, that's, that's a plus. Cool. I didn't even notice that button up there because it used to be down here and it used to be here. <laughs> well, that's that's okay. I take some of that back, Adobe. You didn't remove my button, so I'm happy. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out, Euro. Uh, like Mike says, half the subs of something paint, half the subs of something painter is getting around and fun. What you are you speaking English, like Mike? What's going on here? Let me read this, exactly as he's typed it. Half the subs of Something Painter is getting around and fun what you see. <laughs> oh man, you're doing that on purpose just to, to trip me up, aren't you? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, Sniper says, I still can't go back to Painter. I always find it takes more time to get an asset to look the way I want. I can just go Node Crazy in Blender and I'm done. Or failing that, Substance Designer. I, no, I, I like Painter. The, Painter is a good program. It is. Um, I like it. I like it. I like Mari as well, though. Mari is... Mari, I like Mari for different reasons, though. Uh, Sniper says, I swear I can't even type anymore. You're not as bad as late, Mom. <laughs> Top right, Jeff. I saw it. Thank you, Euro. You are correct. I was wrong. Adobe did not remove it. They just moved it. <laughs> Euro says, but I agree. The new export menu is asked about base. Prefer the, I prefer the old one, too. They've, they've made it more, more complicated than it needs to be. Just looking at what they've done. I mean, I understand that they're trying to give you more functionality and stuff, um, but that's pretty much the same as it used to be. That hasn't changed much. But they've just made it look a bit more busy than it really needed to be. They've added more stuff than needed to be there. It's Adobe that, you know, they've got to change things just for the sake of change. That's what I found with Adobe. Um, uh, Ky Kyle, Ky Kyle, I'm going to say Kyle because I can't, Ky I can't pronounce your username dude. Kyle says it's hard to get a job as a 3D, mo is it hard to get a job as a 3D? My apologies for not being able to, to say your name. Lucas, thank you for following the channel. I'm sure Lu Luke, Lucas, <laughs> again, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. 
Thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. And uh, Kyle, I'm going to say Kyle, uh, is asking, is it hard to get a job as a 3D model? Well, no, not really. But, you know, practice makes perfect, of course. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Uh, Sniper says, I much prefer Mari to both, actually. Yeah, look, I like Mari as well. I can't deny. I probably prefer Mari because I, I like getting in there with the pen and doing stuff by hand. Um, when you're using Painter, you can still do that, by the way, in Painter. Uh, but people tend to use, like I am doing, smart masks and uh, smart materials and all that sort of thing. So you, it's a bit more hands-off than Mari. Mari is much more hands-on, which I like. It's the artist in me. I like getting in there and doing the painting with the pen. Uh, Euro says, the only thing I don't like about substance is the lighting. It's fine in PBR, um, rough metal, but anything spec gloss always comes out looking entirely different. Yeah. Well, see, they're moving away from the spec gloss model now to the metal rough model, at least in games development. Um, and it always, when Mari, well, Mari, when Painter was made, it was always going to, like, it was always metal rough. I'm not saying spec gloss isn't used, it still is, but in games development, particularly if you're using a, an off-the-shelf engine like Unreal, it's metal rail. They're the same thing, really. I mean, they really are. They're just named differently. And, and, and they behave a little differently, but yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Sniper says, yeah, that's so true. Lake Mug says, yeah, I can tell why you and Sniper have different views on this build. Sniper apparently just got a freelance gig modeling an entire toilet <laughs> modeling an entire toilet company's catalogue of toilets complete with textures. But you are ardently against 3D toilets, and so you both kind of have different needs. I put a toilet. You have a bathroom in the house in the hollow. There is a bathroom you can explore in, in the game. Come on. Fair is fair. Make it sound as if it, that, there's no bathroom. There's, there's a toilet in there. It's a gold. I even gave you a gold toilet. You guys wanted a gold toilet, so it's a gold toilet in the game. You can't. You've got nothing to bitch about. Uh, Kyle says, "Yeah, you can call me Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. Can't try and even pronounce it." <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, getting 3D work. Look, it's it's. A lot of people want to be 3D artists, so, you know, but there's a lot of, having said that, there's a lot of work around, like a lot of studios need 3D people, even not just graphic studios, because 3D is, is used in a lot of different industries. Um, I, I've worked in games development, I've worked in film, I work in Archbiz, I ba I'm back doing games development again now, and Archbiz, so there's a whole lot of different places that you can that, that take advantage of doing uh, of 3D. So in that regard, it's uh, easier because there's a lot of different places you can work. Uh, it just boils down to how good you are and all that sort of stuff. And and that just boils down to how much you use the program because the more you use your programs and you do your 3D, the better you'll get. So. Sniper says, I was listening to a guy from Foundry earlier talking about the PBR 2.0 specifications. Hmm. What's PBR two? I haven't heard about that. What what are they, what are they changing in the specs, Sniper, of PBR two? Sniper says spec gloss has better material definition. Well, I'm in the old school days when I was working in games development years ago. Uh, spec gloss was it? You, there was no metal rail. <laughs> That's my printer going. I'm wondering what that noise is. I can hear this. It's my printer cleaning its printhead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it used to be spec gloss. There was no metal rail. So I was brought up, I was weaned on spec gloss. Uh, having said that, I, d I do like metal rail. Euro says, uh, I'd argue they both have their strengths. They probably do. Euro says, spec gloss were non-metallics and metal rough for metallics. Although we're using metal rough here for, um, for non-metallic for wood. So you can use it for non-metallic. Uh, for, yeah, for non-metallic. <laughs> Uh, Kyle says, do you think it's possible to make a living on creating product visualization and product animation? Yes, I do. Uh, I do contract work as well and um, product visualization is a big part. I don't do a lot of product visualization. Um, I, I'm, I'm an environment artist, so I tend to do a lot of environment stuff. 
uh, in our spheres. But yeah, for sure, there's for sure you can make money that way. You can even make money doing um, medical imaging type animation work, like molecules, blood vessels, hearts, all that sort of stuff. There's big money in that as well because uh, those medical firms pay big dollars when when they engage you to do a, a, a piece of work for them. They pay. You can charge. They'll pay. So that's a good area to get into. If that you know, if that's if it, look, it doesn't interest me to be honest with you. Doing medical type work, um, animation work, or rendering work. But if you don't mind doing that sort of work, you can make a lot of money. I just find it incredibly boring. <laughs> I just don't like doing it, so I don't tend to take that sort of work on. But yeah. Euro says plenty of people already do. Kyle, yep, they do. Kyle says to Euro, yeah, so you think it's hard to get a job as that? Sniper says, I'm not exactly sure, Phil. Just, they just skimmed over it, looking to define what else should be added to the format. I'll be reading up on it more. I'm interested as well because I've not heard this two spe specifications for PBR. I'd like to know what they're changing. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought there would be much they could actually change, but who knows. But let me know if you find out. Uh, I'm interested. I'll try and see if I can't uh, research it a bit as well. Yuri says, uh, it'll be as hard as any other job with art and rendering your work will speak for you. Put effort into mastering your work. That's good advice. Um, they're going to judge you on your portfolio. If you're, if you're doing a 3D work and you want to be an artist, your portfolio is your number one selling tool, uh, which is why I tell you guys, do not fill it full of guns and cars. Make it a diverse portfolio. Do not overstuff your portfolio with hundreds of images. I always tell you guys, don't put more than maybe 12 images in your portfolio because otherwise you're just going to overwhelm uh, anyone looking at your work and they're not going to look at it all anyway. They're just going to ignore it. So don't disadvantage yourself by putting too much in your portfolio. Keep it to no more than 12 images uh, and have a diverse portfolio. So no, 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 you know, 12 guns or 12 cars or six guns and six cars. Try and do a, a variety of different work. It'll put you in good standing for anyone looking at your work that way. Um, and as Euro says, it's the quality of your work and, and your quality will get better the more you do it. So. All right, come on, Phil, you got to do some work here. I want to I want to add some more interest to these uh, wooden pieces on the end. So I want to find something, something, something. Android Lust, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? Uh, Euro says, but I like guns. And look, I'm saying if you like guns and cars, do your guns and cars. That's fine. But try and do some other stuff for your portfolio. Do do your guns and cars for your own private work. You know, stuff that you just love modeling. Um, and pick your best gun and your best car to put in your portfolio. How about that? And try and, but try and do some modeling that's not guns and cars. I see it so much. But you young guys, you always want to do guns. You always want to do cars. Eh? You know. <laughs> Expand a little bit. Expand your, your range a little bit. It's a good thing. I know you like doing guns and cars, but come on. Uh, Legmog says, yeah, medical stuff can be a mixed bag. If you just, uh, if it's just cells or virus stuff or simple biology, but an accurate beating heart, or oh Lord save me, any animation which involves puncturing skin <laughs> and wobbly flesh bits being poked and prodded at can be very challenging technically. Well, yeah, it all boils down to, I guess, as to what they want. What they want you to model and animate. But there is good money in it. Good, good money in it. The medical field pays really well. Android Lust says, Phil's the reason I abandoned my 12 car project. <laughs> look, I don't look... Guys, I'm not... I don't want you to be working on stuff you don't want to work on. Don't work on, or, and girls, I don't discriminate, guys or girls. I don't want you not working on stuff that interests you. That's, there's no point otherwise, you're just not going to have fun. Um, I'm trying to say though, if you do want a job in 3D, don't, don't, expand your range, not just cars and guns. Uh, cars, uh, cars and guns, Bill can't speak. You want to expand your range a bit. But 
by all means, do your guys, cars and guns in your own time, not a, not something you're doing for your portfolio, just because you like making them, which is cool. I don't want to see anyone abandon anything they don't want to do, or do anything they don't want to do. Uh, Snipe says to Android Dust Hire, Euro says, to be honest, I haven't modelled weapons in a long time. This work stuff has been everything but. Well, that's good, because it'll help you expand the range in your portfolio. The Space Human says hello. Hello to you, the Space Human. Uh, Kyle says, and how do you find those medical animation jobs? <laughs> You've just got to look. I mean, it's like anything, you know. A, a job is not going to drop in your lap. You're going to have to go and look for it. There's a lot of websites and stuff where you can bid on work if you want to do it that way. I don't. I don't like them. I'm talking about uh, web uh, web companies like um, what are they called? I don't use them. That's why I can't remember their name. Um, it's like it's like a, a site where you go to and and companies put up jobs that they want done and you and you give them a you bid on how much it's, you're going to charge to do it, and then generally the company picks the lowest bidder. I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway. Those, I, I, I try and avoid those sort of places because unless you're living in a country where the cost of living is very low, you're going to be outbid by somebody living in a country where the cost of living is really low. Uh, and it just it, it devalues your work. It devalues every 3D person's work uh, if, they, if they try and bid on work that way. And that's why I don't like those sort of companies that put up websites where people bid like that and generally even if you're a company and you you might be thinking oh well, this is great for me as a company I can get cheap work done well yeah you can but you get what you pay for always 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 remember that that's all I'm going to say on the matter so you know by all means if you're a company and you think you can get cheap labor by using one of these websites go for it and let's see what the quality of the work you get back is um, I'm one of these people that believes in quality over quantity. You'll you'll always get repeat work as a 3D person if you give good quality. If you just try and knock stuff out because you want to take on as much work as possible, as quickly as possible, your quality is going to be crap and you're not going to get repeat customers. So that's my advice. If you want to do uh, contract work, produce good quality work. Don't try and do a lot of quantity work because you'll think you'll make more money one in the long run. Legmog says, of course, back in Phil's day, all, all the, all the uh, rage with for 3D modeling portfolios was horses and crude flintlock pistols. Of course, the automobile was still a long way off back in those days. That's right. I'm such an old man. You listen, listen here, Legmog. You're not, you're not that much younger than me. You want to be careful here. I'm just going to have a look at this one. No, that's not what I want. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Let's have a look at this one. No, that's not what I want either. What about this one? This one may be what I want. Okay, so I'm going to... What am I going to do? I'm just going to turn that off for a minute so I can see what I'm, what, what's going on here. Okay, that one and that one. I'm going to move this. I'm actually going to group these two together in their own grouping. I'm going to save because, you know, I turn quick, I turn auto save off, so I must remember to save. <laughs> I have had Substance Painter crash on me before. And that would be bad. That would be very bad. Uh, Morik says, hi. Hi, Morik to you as well. Good to see you. Sniper says, uh, I now won wonder why, I now won wonder, I now wander the 3D wasteland trying to diversify now that I cannot do cars and guns anymore. <laughs> I haven't published a, a finished asset in a year. Oh, don't, don't say that. Oh, hang on. I'm not paying attention to my rewards here. 
Um, okay, so we have. Uh, who? How do I find out who was that? Uh, suggest a poll, Maya or other. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you set up polls here? I, I, I'm not actually using Twitch chat. I use um, Streamlabs chatbot. <laughs> Snurfberry, can you help me? Or Sniper Echo, is there a way to set up a poll in Twitch chat? Sniper says, Demaric Awesome. Uh, I want to try and set a poll up in Twitch chat to ask a question. Maya or other? Now, I don't like to play favourites with 3D programs. In my opinion, they're all very good. Mercury says there is, but I have no idea if mods can do it. <laughs> oh, maybe I should remove that, because I don't think I can do it in uh, Streamlabs. I'm just looking through Streamlabs here. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted. Oh, there is a poll function. Okay, Maya or other. Maya. Max. I'm setting this poll. I think I'm trying to set this poll up for you. Uh, Maya Max Cinema 4D. If I don't spell it properly, Lake Mug will get upset because he's a Cinema 4D user. Uh, Blender. And then we'll just put other. There you go, guys. Uh, the poll has been set up. Let, let, um, I, I'm assuming that might have been you, Kyle. <laughs> Type your number as to what you think. And now set up straight fill. Okay. I'm setting up straight so I can mark that one as complete and uh, suggested the poll. So I mark that one as complete. I'm, I'm keeping a track here in the background of all, all of the um, results for the poll and I'll let you guys know. Oh, you can see it yourselves. You don't need me to tell you. Oh, no, you can't. That's just the number. Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> no one for Maya yet. Ooh, is that correct? Yeah, no, no, there's one vote for Maya. I want to make sure I haven't missed any of my chat here. Hang on. Yes, yeah, so again, I, I, I say to you guys, I don't, I don't play favorites with 3D software. All of the 3D programs are very good now, even Blender, which is completely free. Um, there's, there's really no reason to be playing favorites with one over the other. You use what you feel most comfortable using because they've all got slightly different interfaces. I'm a Max user. I've been using Max for like, you know, over 10 years. Uh, I'm, I'm used to Max. I like Max. Um, I like the interface of Max. But you use whatever software you either like or you can afford. That's probably the most important thing. And Blender is completely free. So you can do 3D and not spend a cent. Oh, Houdini, look, that's the, put it in the other. I'm sorry I forgot to put a Houdini in there. I knew I'd forget one, at least one. Uh, Yuri says, don't forget MS Paint. <laughs> I guess. I wouldn't suggest MS Paint personally, but anyway. Smurfberry says, there's a way you can do a poll directly in the Twitch chat, not with a bot. Yeah, I know, but I don't have Twitch chat open. I use Streamlabs chat bot to chat to you guys in Twitch chat. Um, I don't have my uh, Twitch page open at all while I'm streaming. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have to start doing that. It might, might be better, because I know that the poll function built into Twitch chat through Twitch is, is good. So. I'll look into that. I've only just added these new rewards that viewers can use. So that's why um, you caught me by surprise. I only added them like yesterday or the day before. So. And I added the no music one and the play a game one, but you've got to spend a lot of points for me to play a game in 
critique our assets in a game. Because I know that a lot of my viewers like me, well, like me doing 3D and they don't want to watch me playing a game. Um, well, even though I'm very bad at playing and I wouldn't probably be playing, I'd just be, uh, like I said, we'd be looking at the assets and talking about the different assets in the game. Uh, Smurfy says, but I don't see any options for it as a moderator. I'll check that as well. Davron, thank you for the follow, Davron. I do, I do appreciate it, guys and girls, when you do follow me on Twitch. So thank you, Davron, for the follow. Uh, don't forget to, you can follow my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D as well as I have a YouTube channel, so which has my previous streams uploaded to it eventually as well. Uh, and I always post to my Twitter though when I go live. So if you ever want to know when I'm live, you can either set up a notification in Twitch or you can follow me on Twitter. And don't forget to guys and girls to join the Discord server. I've just popped a link here in Twitch chat. Only subs can post links in my Twitch chat, but everyone can post links on my Discord. So if you have, there's a gallery section if you want to show off some of your work. And I love looking at the stuff you guys are making. Feel free to pop in on the Discord server there and uh, show your work in the gallery. Oh, and I'll look into that smurfery about the poll business uh, after the stream. Euro says you should be able to do it in the mod dashboard. I would have thought mods, I haven't restricted mods to do anything. So if you're a mod, you should be able to do it, I would have thought. Sniper says smurf, yep, you can type a poll. Uh, Morak says I agree. In my opinion, it's good to know what every software is capable of so you know where to turn your eyes to get a certain result faster. Uh, like Max has something that Blender doesn't and helps out, then Blender has stuff that Max doesn't. So I end up uh, br bridging my models. It's not the software that counts, it's the tools, that's true. But it, it can get expensive if you start using multiple 3D programs, paid programs. It can start adding up quite a lot, quite quickly. That's why I suggest if you want to do 3D and you're not sure if you're going to like it, use Blender. Blender's great 3D software and it's free. And then if you find that you really do like it, then you can start trialing a couple of the other 3D programs to see which interface you like better and pick the one that you like the most and that you can afford. Okay, let's have a look at our poll, shall we? All right, so it looks like uh, there's a tie between Maya and Blender. Oh, set up straight again. <laughs> okay. So uh, as far as the poll results go, it's a tie between Maya and Blender, which is disappointing as a Mac shooter, but anyway. Um, there you go. So Maya and Blender are the two that have come out ahead. They're both exactly the same. Heathen Zero says that I agree. It's Max. No, <laughs> no, we're not going there. It's not, not, that's not the way it is. Blender is good. Uh, I personally wouldn't use Maya, but... <laughs> That's not true. My is good as well. Let's have a look at this dirt soft engines to see if we can get a blend going. Uh, I also just want to make sure I do a mask with color selection on this. Uh, no. Curvature. Turn global invert on. I don't think this is actually going to, this mask is not going to do what I want it to do. So we're going to remove that mask and choose something else. Um, <laughs> Legmark says, okay, the result of a tie Cinema 40 wins. Not, no, Cinema 40. <laughs> the result of a tie Cinema 40 wins. Is that how it works, is it, Legmark? <gasps> Um, Euro says, speaking of Max, I should move my plugins over to 2021. Yes, um, I've, I've done that. I'm using Max 2021. And all of the plugins I've used so far that I was using in Max 2020 are working without a problem in Max 2021. That's without them having to do a recompile or anything like that. So you should find the majority of your plugins that were working in Max 2020 will work in Max 2021. There are some exceptions, uh, but majority of them should work without getting updates. Uh, Morak says, Euro, my question is, is it stable? 
Yes, no, the Max 2021 so far has been pretty stable. I haven't, it hasn't crashed on me yet, but I've only been using it for like a week or maybe two weeks now. So, uh, Sniper says, uh, main reason I moved almost exclusively to Blender is because I could streamline my workflow across all the pipeline, easy to extend. And now that I'm playing around with the procedural modeling, modeling uh, there, I'm liking it more. Last week, I created a more advanced array modifier with it to solve a workflow bottleneck. Yura says 2021 is wicked. I agree. I like Max 2021. So far. So far. It hasn't crashed so far, so I like it. I'll be cursing it when it crashes, though. Don't don't worry. Uh, and again, I, I say this not because I want you guys to use Max or Maya, but do remember that Autodesk will give you a free one-year license if you have a student email address. It's fully functional software. It's exactly the same as what everybody else uses. It's, it's, actual, it's actually a license number that they give you that you put in your software to unlock it, to make it fully functional. The only restriction is you can't use it for commercial work. Um, and the Autodesk will give you that license for free for one year. Uh, you can renew the license every year for as long as you're a student. So I don't think you only get one year's use. You can get as many years as you need while you're studying. Um, and they update Max every year anyway, so and they'll give you a new license key for the new version of Max as long as you're still studying. Uh, Morik says I'll wait a bit more. Yeah, it's always wise generally to wait with a new version of Max until the first service pack comes out, and that's usually three to four months after the release of the version, just to be on the safe side. Um, I didn't actually install Max 2021 the minute it was released. I waited about a month before I installed it just to, just to see if there were any major problems because I need it to work for work. So I can't install Max and have it not work on me. Uh, I would that, that would be bad. Uh, so I waited a little bit. And the studio, we never jump into a new version at the Archbiz studio. Uh, I can do it here at home because it's my machine. but. The machines in the studio, the, the actual studio themselves, we don't update Max to the very latest version until we're at least into one or two service packs. Just to be on the safe side. Because <laughs> we can't say to a client, I'm sorry, but we, we, we missed our deadline because, you know, we installed the new version of Max and it crashed or it keeps crashing. Um, Yuri says the, they re rewrote the entire GUI from the ground up on modern QT. So all those latency issues are gone. Yes, the interface is very nice, very smooth. Uh, I can't fault it. I think the new the new Max interface has been behaving very well, very nicely. You can load up million, multi-million polygon models and it's very snappy, which is good. Uh, Sniper says to leg more. I'll edit that now. Sniper says thanks for the heads up. Euro says it's three year. No, no, it's not Euro anymore. It used to be a three year license. Now it's one starting this year. So you used to be able to get three years for free as a student license. Now it's only one year. You go to order. It's still three years if you're using an older version of Max. But if you want to use Max 2021, it's one year. So going forward now, it's only going to be one year. But you can renew it every year, so as so long as you're a student still. Edo says, Phil didn't say hi to I'm sorry, Edo. Hello, Edo. It's good to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you've, you're dealing with the lockdown, Edo. My apologies for not saying hello. You know, <laughs> between me trying to work and read the chat and do a poll, it's, it's, it's all confusing for poor Phil. Anyway. Um, Sniper says to Android, Edo, hi. Uh, say hi to the man already. I'm sorry, Sniper. Go, hello, Edo. Android Lust says, well, Sniper, I ran into an issue. I found a workaround for it, but apparently Mac Myers X Gen hates Arnold GPU render. I actually quite like, you know, you know, I was bitching about the Arnold render when Max first, when Autodesk first introduced it. Uh, the new version of Max 2021 is pretty good. Not as good as V-Ray, but, but pretty good. Let's have a look at this mask here. So yeah, the Arnold renderer in Max is decent. It's pretty good.
Now I'm using a metallic texture just to add a bit of interest to the wood, so just just so we got the, the, the wooden bits look a bit more interesting. Uh, I've just noticed too that the wood grain is actually flowing in the wrong direction on these posts, so I'm going to um to fix that. Right now. Now the wood grain is flowing in the right direction, I believe. Yes. So yeah, the, I'm just I've just added. Now it was a metallic gold texture, but I'm using it just to add a bit more interest to the wood, just to make the wood look a bit older. Android Lost says, I don't want to go back to CPU rendering anymore. No, neither do I. Uh, that's why I like V-Ray, because in V-Ray you can use the CPU and the GPU. You can do both at the same time. Uh, and you can also use um, network rendering for multiple GPUs and CPUs. So that's another good thing about V-Ray that I really like. Uh, but Arnold, the new version of Arnold in Max 2021 is, is really cool. And it's actually the default uh, now. So Max used to default to using Scanline Renderer. Now it defaults to using the Arnold renderer. Oh. Snipe says, "Yeah, for sure. You can use another renderer. You can use other ren another renderer. I'm sure there's others." Morex says, uh, "Android Lust. What GPU renderer do you use?" Edo says, "The 2080 Ti is so good. I thought my computer was frozen. It instantly sims closed." And don't forget, uh, there's a rumor going around that Nvidia are going to be releasing the new 30 series. RTX cards in September. So keep an eye out in two weeks' time for the keynote given by um, Jensen from NVIDIA on the 14th of May. He's doing a keynote that's being live broadcast on YouTube. He's not going to talk about um, gaming GPUs. They're probably going to be like data center and, and AI stuff. So, you know, the Quadro cards. But the, the rumor is he's going to talk about Ampere, which is the new the next chip from NVIDIA. And if he mentions it during that keynote, then you know uh, in a few months after that they're going to release the new GPUs, gaming GPUs. And the rumor is they're going to be pretty sweet, the new Ampere GPUs from NVIDIA. If you believe rumors. Uh, Morag says, and does it allow you to extract all passes and render elements? Yes, it does. Uh, Arnold does. Uh, Morik. Android Lust says the main issue is X-Gen with GPU rendering. Uh, Morik. Android Lust says to Morik, I use Arnold's GPU rendering. And yes, yes it does. Morik says to Edo, wait, you can use your GPU to sim close. Marvel. And Edo says yes. And I want to thank you too for the sub being a sub, uh, Edo. It's really cool of you. Uh, Morex says there were leaks for, thir for the 3080. Uh, there were leaks for 3080 Ti, yeah. And it could be somewhere between 50% plus faster than a 2080 Ti. Wouldn't that be sweet? So you could turn the RTX on and not get any, um, not, not pay any penalty for your uh, in your games. Not to mention how much it's going to speed up um, GPU rendering and stuff for us, for 3D guys. Uh, I'm waiting to see. I'm waiting. I, I, I would love to upgrade my GPU. I'm not that I need to. Uh, I'm running to uh, a 2080 Ti, but not a 2080, a 2080. But I'd like to. Because faster is better. Faster is always better. Android Lost says Pixar's Render Man is working on a GPU renderer. I used to love Render Man. Oh, cool. So Pixar's uh, are working on a re GPU renderer. They've come out with some really interesting stuff with the 3D community Pixar, actually. So I'm interested to see what they come up with. Android Lost says, This is why I hate buying computer hardware. Within a week, it's considered trash. <laughs> it's not trash. Look, I generally, my when I do a GPU upgrade, I don't do it every every generation. So, like, if, if at the moment I was using a 980, 
I would have updated to a 2080. If, I'm, if I was using a 1080, I would not have upgraded to a 2080, but I would upgrade to a 3080. So I always tend to skip a generation. I find you get the best value for money doing that than trying to, to replace your GPU every time NVIDIA brings out a new, a new one. Uh, if you leave it between generations, you skip a generation, then you get a nice performance boost when you do upgrade. And let's face it, it costs a bloody fortune to upgrade a GPU now. You know, gone are the days where you used to spend $300 to upgrade your GPU. In Australia particularly, you know, it, 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 the average is around $1,500 to upgrade a GPU to an NVIDIA card now. So they've gotten really expensive. Uh, I wish NVIDIA would maybe not do that because <laughs> I, I, Jensen will run his company the way he wants to. But um, it's as from a consumer point of view, it, it's incredibly expensive to start upgrading GPUs now which is why a lot of people are buying consoles. So NVIDIA, keep that in mind. You don't want your your base of users that buy GPUs and uh, PC Master Race to switch to using a console because it's better value for money for them. Uh, and the new Xbox console, the Xbox X, is supposed to be pretty beastly when it comes to the uh, graphics capabilities as well. So, when that, And that's going to be released around Christmas time, so... But you're right, Android Lust, it's, it's annoying, isn't it? It's not, again, don't, yeah, Intel have just released a new 10th generation CPUs as well. Sniper says, please nobody talk about buying new hardware. You, you still haven't got your hardware, Sniper Rico? That's terrible. Sniper Rico ordered some hardware. And he's been waiting, what, it's been months, I think, now, Sniper Rico, for, for it to arrive. Because... Everything is delayed everywhere at the moment. Even here in Australia, our postal service is groaning under the weight of people buying stuff online. Because no one can go out, they've got to buy everything online. And um, buying stuff online means you're going to wait months for it to get delivered because the postal service is overwhelmed. All the delivery companies are just overwhelmed, which is annoying. <laughs> Uh, I did finally get my package, by the way. Remember, you, I was telling you guys a couple of weeks ago, was, my package was like three weeks overdue. It did, it did eventually arrive, thank God. Android Lost says, it's been so long and you haven't got your hardware. I know I feel for you. I'd be climbing the walls. When I buy something, I want it immediately. Uh, Sniper Echo says, with this world lockdown, I can hardly get normal mail. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. Morag says, I'm pretty happy with my system. It's five-year-old already and still runs everything near perfectly. Uh, Nura says, the people who buy the high-end consumer cards are a minority prosumers. Well, that's true. They are. Um, but again, my advice still stands. I, I skip a generation. So that, that would be, if you want the best bang for buck, skip a generation. Buy every second generation of, of, of new graphics card, whether it's AMD or NVIDIA. And that way you'll get a really nice performance boost when you actually do upgrade. Um, having said that, like the 3080 from a 2080, if you're going to get, or a 3080 Ti from a 2080 Ti, if you're going to get like a 50% performance increase, that's nothing to sneeze at. But I probably wouldn't generally do that, I, I, particularly because they cost so much money now. I'd wait a generation. If I was on a 20 series card, I wouldn't buy a 30 series card. I'd wait for a 40 series card to come out. Uh, Zofo says, hey, I got Rhizom and love it. Oh, good Zofo. I'm glad. I love Rhizom as well. It's wonderful for UV mapping because <laughs> I hate UV mapping so much. Uh, but it's good to see you. Says, Do that. Good to see you, Zofo. And I'm glad you like Rhizom. Uh, again, remember, you can uh, you can subscribe to Ryzen. So if you don't want to buy it outright, you don't have to. You can always um, go on a subscription model if you need to. I always like buying software because I don't like subscribing. I think it's a waste of money. If I buy something, I want to own it forever. I don't want to have to, you know, stop using it when I stop subscribing. But hey, Adobe, thank you very much. But I'm glad you like it, Zofo. Android Lost says, I can't really justify buying the top NVIDIA card for just gaming, but I also don't game at 4K or even 1440p. And you don't generally need a top-of-the-range video card if you're not going to be using a 4K screen. 
Um, yeah, it's unnecessary. It's only when you're trying to push really high resolutions you really need the top of the range card. And it depends on, like, I, I know a lot of gamers like to, to game at 144 hertz monitors, which means, you know, you need really high frame rates to actually do it justice. I'm one of these people that I'm quite happy with 30 frames a second playing a game. I mean, a lot of people say 60, and 60 is fine, but I'd settle for 30. I, I don't need to game at 144 frames a second. Some people do, though. Some people, if they're professional games people, I guess that they want to. They want every edge in their um, in their gameplay. But uh, for me personally, I don't, I don't see, I don't want to game at 144 frames a second. I don't see the need. Morag says 144 is only for PvP games. Well, that's, even then, I don't really see the need personally. But to each their own. That's the the great thing about being a PC gamer. You know, you can tailor your system to what you want exactly. You can spend as much or as little money on it to get exactly what you want. Unlike a console where you're sort of locked into whatever the developers tell you that you're going to play at. Usually. Uh, Morag says everything else is around 40 for me and it's fine. Yeah, look, like I said, I can go as low as 30. As long as it doesn't dip below 30, then I'm, I'm generally fine. Remember too, when you're watching a movie, cinema, that's 24 frames a second. You have no problems watching a movie, do you? You don't think, man, the, man, the frame rate in this movie is really bad. And that's 24 frames a second. Uh, so gaming wise though, 30 frames a second is fine with me. As long as it doesn't go below 30, then I'm happy. 60 is the ideal, but as long as it's not lower than 30, then I'm fine. Particularly with uh, FreeSync and G-Sync now, if you've got a FreeSync or a G-Sync monitor, you don't even notice. It's buttery smooth. Regardless of whether it's dropped between 30 and 60, it's still smooth. So. Okay, we want a, we want a wooden um, material for our little, 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 little boy, I guess. I was going to say cherub, but he doesn't have wings, so can't be a cherub. Uh, but let's go with a wood grain, uh, a wood color that's a little bit different from the uh, the rest of the uh, fireplace. So we'll go with like a cherry red. Um, again, I'm looking through my smart materials that I created for the different bits of furniture in the building. It just helps to keep everything consistent inside the house with all of our different bits and pieces of furniture. I don't actually like that, so I'm just going to undo that. Have a look at this one. No, I don't like that one either. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe if we layer a couple of different pieces, bits and pieces together, it might be okay. So we'll leave this as an underlying base. Um, and let's throw another colour on top of that. Let's have a look at this one. And that could be interesting as well. So let's group both of these together. Uh, let's mask with colour selection. Just to him. And I might just just, 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 just rotate the wood grain a little bit. And then we'll do the same on the one above it. Uh, now we want to use a smart mask to give us an interesting blend. Um, Morag says, but people have perfected the art of movie making, motion blur and subframes. You can get motion blur in, in gaming to cover up a lower frame rate. Uh, Andrew Doss says, speaking of movies, I believe The Hobbit was 60 frames per second, but I don't think it was no, uh, received nicely by viewers. 
Um, it's because they're used to 24 frames a second. Morag says there are some 60 frame per second movies that are amazing. Um, Android Lost says I don't think I've ever seen one. I don't think I have either. I think uh, the Lord of the Rings might have been 48 frames a second from memory. I think he went with some really weird 48 frame per second speed. I'm not sure why. I think it was to do with the cameras he was using. Edo says uh, this hair gonna make me a long time. This hair gonna make gonna take me a long time. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I can't read. I did actually notice Edo, you did pop something into the gallery as well. It was you, wasn't it? Yeah. Which I'll show up toward the end of the stream. Edo's working on another character, and he's been doing uh, the images he popped in the Discord gallery. Look like there's a skirt that the characters were wearing. Uh, Morek says, I'm trying to remember now, but it's late, so my brain processing power is limited. Overclock your brain. That's right, as Android Lust says. Morek says, all I know is if you want 60 frames per second with Visual Effects Studios, start cursing, because there's a ton of more frames that need rendering. Yes. I, and I don't see the, the need for it personally. Like I said, 24 frames per second is the standard for film cinematic film. They only tend to go higher when they want to do slow motion and all that sort of stuff. Slow motion? Yes. <laughs> Android Lost says to Edo, I'm having nightmares about 3D hair. Edo says, I love it, just takes a long time. If you need hair card help, let me know. Uh, don't forget to the new version of the Unreal Engine 4.25, which is due to be released any, any time now, uh, has hair and fur improvements and up updates and it's supposed to be very good uh, i don't tend to use i don't tend to use um hair and fur in the unreal engine but the people that do have said that it's very good so keep an eye on that if you want to use real-time hair and fur in a game engine look at the new stuff coming in in the unreal engine 4.25 which has not been released yet but will be I threw the mask on the wrong thing, so let's let me redo that. And let's play with our mask a little bit. It looks a bit like the Phantom of the Opera. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looked like he had like a mask on one half of his face. Android Lost says, uh, I wasn't going to use hair cards on this project, but it probably would have saved me a few days of headache. Or before I, I'm just going to jump back into. Okay, it's this one. I just want to make some adjustments to the mask on this underlying layer. finding the one that I want. Maybe it's this one. No, it's not that one. This is a problem when you start having so many layers within layers, it's finding the right one. 
it's this one here. Uh, Sniper says it's fume effects in max node base. I I haven't used fume for many years. The last time I used fume effects was probably about eight years ago. So I'm not sure if it's node base now. It's good. I just don't tend to do work that needs it. Um, Morik says I found some interesting ways of making okay share. Vellum simulations in Houdini basically get some poly strips and run them through a cloth stem. They need a lot of edge loops and then you take those those loops and to extract as curves, add a tiny bit of thickness and you get some okayish hair. Cool. Android Dust says apparently you can use XGen to generate hair colors. If it was going to make this project real time, I would have tried it. Zofo says to Edo, what's the best hair card tutorial? Okay. What is it? What is it? What is it? There's, there's something I'm trying to just change a little bit on this. I'm just having a bit of a problem finding the right. Maybe it's this mask. Maybe it's a. I don't like the mask, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe. Maybe I should pull back a little bit on the on the mixing. Yeah, that might be better. Pull back a little on the mix. Um, the other thing I, I don't like here is the wood grain on the side, the direction that the wood grain is flowing. I think I want it to flow vertically, not horizontally. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jump back in it because if I change the rotation using the tool over here, it's going to change the rotation here at the front. It's actually in the UV map. So I'm going to jump back into, I'm just going to do a quick save. I'm going to jump back into Max really quickly. And we're going to have a look at the UV mapping for these side pieces. So I'm throw an unwrap down. Open the UV editor. Let's find where that is. And that is here. And where is this one on the other side? It's here. So let's uh, select by whole piece. I'm just going to, what am I going to do here? Bedtime for you, Morak. Well, good night, Morak. Thanks for popping in and saying hello and being here. You have a good night's sleep. See you tomorrow. Yes, I'll be back on again tomorrow, Morik. Um, Morik says, I got a question, Phil. Where does the smoke from the fire go, go to? It goes up there. So there's going to be like a, a chimney. This is actually going to be set against the wall. Uh, but the fire actually escapes out this bit at the, at the back here. So there you go. There's an opening at the back. Andrew Dust says, where did you find your wood materials? I made, well, the the cherry and the chocolate are standard materials that come with Substance Painter, I believe. Uh, but the smart materials I'm using now, you, you see me using, are ones that I made using those two base materials. So I took the two base materials of cherry wood and chocolate wood, uh, and there's like a honeycomb wood as well. And then I, add, I added my own smart masks and blending to make my own smart materials. 
tell you is I used base, base stuff that came with the program and then made my own smart materials based on that. Um, Morag says that another question is Mac still using only one CPU core for its unwraps and operations? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I know the, the updates coming for Max. They are improving the um, UV tool. So maybe at the moment it still is, but I think they might be looking at uh, improving that with like the next um, general update to Max 2021, which is part of you know, every year they do like three updates of the program. Uh, and because I know that they're going to start using AI to do the unwrapping like Ryzen sort of does. They, they, they're going to start incorporating that into Max as well. Andrew Dust says, actually, I think you made them in Alchemist. I'm, I don't, no, I made one wood grain in Alchemist, yes. So one of them I did do in Alchemist, you're correct. Uh, but I haven't used that wood yet that I did in Alchemist. In, on this model anyway, that we're working on. So you are right. Some of, some of my textures I did make in Alchemist, yeah. Uh, Edo says to Zopho, I sent a whisper with the link to the best tutorial. Well, thank you, Edo, for doing that. Um, so yeah, the, the wood grain here, I need to... I, I want to try... <laughs> I, I need to rotate it without really affecting the rest of my UV shells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them out so I don't get confused. Come on, Max. Come on, Max, don't do this. Whoa, you are annoying. There we go. <laughs> um, we need to rotate them so that the wood grain ends up in the right spot. Let me just undo that. I want to turn angle snap on here so I get a correct rotation. Da -da 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 -da. So 90 degrees on that one and 90 degrees on this one. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay the two of them. Simply because I don't really have enough room here to lay them separately. I could do a repack to get a bit more room, but that's going to move all of my UVs around and I, I want to try and avoid that if I can. Uh, so what I might end up doing, I think, is doing an overlay of both of them on top of each other. And... Scaling it in a little bit. Trying to make sure I don't overlap any other UVs. So now if we jump back into, let me re-export the model. And if we jump back to Substance Painter, we should be able to edit our project configuration, reload the model. Rebake out our maps. Let's just get rid of the ambient occlusion because we're not using that. And now our wood grain is flowing in the correct direction. Uh, but I want to add a little bit more interest to this statue, so let's keep going on him. Let's jump back up into our smart materials and let's go again with a gold. I always like to put gold on wood. More gold is better. More gold is more better. You got to shoot off, Sniper Echo. Thanks for being here, Sniper. I'll be back on tomorrow, so I'll see you then. You have a good night, Sniper Echo.
As Zopo says, got to run, have fun. No problems. Thanks for being here as well, Zopo. And, uh, is that a tea? Is it Portelamon? Portelamon? Thank you for the follow. My apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name. Portelamon. Portelamon. Uh, thanks for following Phil Bell's greeting. Uh, so yeah, I just want to, I want to gold again. Let's have a look at, um, let's just have a quick look at this one. Maybe. I'm going to throw that into that group. And we're going to throw a smart mask. Actually, I just throw to a smart mask. Just going to just make some adjustments here to the tiling on the underlying texture. And now we're going to throw down a smart mask. Go with um, surface warm. I might actually just darken this uh, gold up a little bit. Now we can play with that mask. I'm going to pull a tiny amount of the gold into the wood. I might just knock it back a little bit as well in the mixing. decorative pieces here. And I do want a gold for that. So we're going to go with, uh, let's have a look at this one. Mask of color selection. Let's just do a quick save because you never know. Uh, now we have these pieces that run around the outside here. I want those to be a metal as well. So let's have a look at um, Let's have a look at this one. Mask with color selection. Uh, 
No, that's fine, but I want to put another one on top of that again. So let's go with, um, let's have a look at this gold. Again, mask with color selection. Uh, we're going to group both of these together. Again, I'm going to do a quick save because now we're starting to get a lot of layers happening and the program can start to get a bit twitchy <laughs> when you've got a lot going on. Uh, we're going to throw a smart mask down on top of both of those now. So let's go with um, Let's go, let's try stains and scratches. Let's see what that one gets us. And again, I'm going to mask that group with color selection. Move in a bit closer so we can see what it's doing. Uh, let's play with our mask. Going to hmm. I can either make the, the bottom and the top here above and below the uh, statue a wood or I can see if uh, a gold might look interesting. So I'm going to go back to my smart materials and let's see what we've got. Not that one. Let's have a look at this one. Actually, just before I do that, I'm going to close my group up here. Yeah. Mask it with color selection again. So we can either go with a gold or we can go with a wood. I'm just trying to work out what what would be better. Andrew Loss says this fireplace looks more expensive than most cars. <laughs> well, we want it to be a nice feature for the uh, for the study, and we're going to reuse it again in the sitting room probably. So we do want to make sure that it uh, that it has all the bling, all the bling. Bobia, thank you for the follow, Bobia as well. I do appreciate it. So thank you, Bobia, for the follow. Rococo era, as Ido says, yes. More gold is good. More gold. Um, just, mm, let's just turn that off for a moment. I just want to see if there's another metal here that might be interesting. Let's have a look at this one. Maybe a mix between the two of those. Let's uh, group them. Just for 
regrouped and we're going to do a save. We're starting to get a lot of layers happening now. Even though it doesn't look like a lot of layers, you, you've got to remember we've got nested layers within layers here. So <laughs> we are starting to get quite a lot of different stuff going on. And the more stuff you put in, the slower the program will get. And the more risky you have the program crashing. Okay, now let's throw a smart mask down. Let's go with... Um, let's do the surface worn again. And again, we're going to mask with color selection. Android Lust says no risk, no reward. That's right. We're going to push it as far as we can. So I'm just introducing the second layer here. If we sort of look at the base of the, uh, the base through here, you can sort of get a better idea of what it's doing. So instead of that, just that bright gold, I'm just bringing in this other gold just to tone it down a little bit, give it a bit, a bit more of a two-tone color. Make it look more aged. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Edo says, no bezels, no bake. I've never heard that one. I haven't heard that one either. Edo says, I just made it up. Now what we're going to do is once I finish texturing all the different pieces up we're going to be throwing a, like a dirt texture that will cover the entire fireplace. We do that right at the very end. Um, so at this stage we're just doing the bits and pieces to texture them up and then once we've textured all the different pieces up we're going to make it dirty. Make it dirty. Uh, let's let's move to the top of the fireplace here. So I want to marble. I know that I want the top of the fire, the the shelf up here to be marble. So I'm just going to see if I've got a smart material that might be appropriate. Let's have a look at this black marble. Again, we're going to mask with color selection to the blue. I might just, um, what is that? I might see. And then we've got this darker marble on top. Just going to play with the uh, mixing a little bit. Edo says, uh, I wouldn't bake a mesh without beveling my edges. No, I wouldn't either. It's a good idea. Always bevel. Or chamfer, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now we have to decide. Now I know for the interior here, I want that to be a marble as well, but I want it to be like a white marble. Let's just do a save and have a look at this smart material. I actually created this for the for those lion statues that are in the game. Yeah, no, that's not what I want. OK, 
Okay, this is a white marble. Let's see what this one looks like. This one may work. Mask with color selection to there. Hang on, hang on. I picked the wrong color. To there. And that's all well and good, but um, this layer one is just a blank layer. Let's get rid of that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate that white marble. And we're going to, you know my procedure. You guys know where I'm going. We're going to darken up the second color. Okay, now we're going to go back into our smart masks and we're going to find one that will give us a nice mix. Surface worn should work. I'm going to turn off the height information for the underlying layer. And we're going to play with our blending. That's all well and good. What I'm going to do again now is I'm going to duplicate that darker one we just made. I'm going to remove that mask because it made a duplicate of the mask and I don't want that. Let's make this second duplicate darker again. Quite dark. And let's just clear the mask because that's why we can't see anything. Okay, let's go with um, another smart mask. We'll go with moss from top. But I'm going to do an invert. Pull the level up. Pull back on the contrast. I'll turn triplanar off. And pull back on the grunge a little bit. No, we don't want scratches. We don't want to change the scatter. And what I'm basically trying to do here is I want it to look like, um, you know when you burn wood you get ash? And sometimes fire will darken up something. If like if a flame hits something it makes it black. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm using that to try and mimic the fact that the fire would be around about here and some of the fire might have hit the marble, so it's dirtied up the sides of the marble here, toward the bottom. But I don't really want to dirty through the front here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my mask. A charred look, that's exactly right. Thank you, Andrew Redlust, a charred look. That's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for.
Good morning, Hellforge. It's good to see you. How are you? How you doing, Hellforge? Good to see you. says not sure yet I literally woke up less than a minute ago fell asleep with the computer on I have no I've never done that <laughs> sure I do that all the time uh, Hellforge says hope you're all having a good day I'm, I am I hope you're well as well Hellforge going to remove that that ash from the front here or that dirt just through most of the front um, we'll leave it on the top here Wondering whether I should move it, remove it from the entire piece at the front. Mm, maybe, maybe. How are we going for time? Oh, I don't think we're going to finish it today. We will have to finish it tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Let's do a quick save. Um, Andrew Doss says, my day is ending soon. Edo says, the night is young. Unfortunately, though, Phil has to go. We got a good, we've got, we've got, Got a good start going here. We can uh, continue with this tomorrow. We will finish off the texturing tomorrow. But we got a good start happening. Uh, Confusion says looks very nice until now. <laughs> it's looking real nice so far, Hellforge says. Thanks, Hellforge. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, tomorrow we'll probably put some tiles down here for this piece. Uh, we'll do the back of the fireplace. We will do the um, this front decorative piece through here and through here. And then, of course, we've got to throw an overall dirt layer on it. And we'll just play around with some of the colours and stuff. Once we've got it all textured up and making it, and we'll play around with the colours of the different pieces to make sure they blend properly. But it's a good base to start with and we can finish it tomorrow. But I do want to thank you guys and girls though very much for hanging out with me and for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. Well, I'll be back again tomorrow. We'll pick up where we left off and finish this fireplace off. Uh, and if we finish it off before the end of the stream, then we'll start working on another asset. You're quite welcome. I do want to thank again, Bobya, Paulman, Davron, and Lucius for the follows. Um, Thank you guys for following the channel. Do remember too, if you want to join the Phil Does 3D Discord server, you can click that blue panel in my uh, below my stream and in my panels. There's a blue graphic that says join the Discord server. Um, and you can follow my Twitter if you want to be reminded when I go live because I always post to Twitter. And thank you, Hellforge. There's a Discord link in uh, Twitch chat. Um, I do want to thank you guys so very much for being here and for watching and hanging out with me. I'll be back on tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. We'll finish this fireplace all. 
and we'll go from there. <laughs> okay guys, you take care and I'll see you tomorrow. See you guys.